Bungalow Bill here. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial about how to quickly build a large cram cannon. In this tutorial, I assume that you already know how cram cannons work, or have at least watched a basic tutorial about them so that you understand how the individual components work. This tutorial is instead going to be on putting the components together in a quick and effective manner. I choose the largest turret ring, as well as the largest turret base. Now, I'm going to start building my cram slice. I'm doing a, a planar Tetris, as that is the easiest Tetris to build. You start with one cram connector, surround it with packers, surround it with packers that are oriented in the correct direction is an important portion of the step. The connections should be facing outwards. We will go for boom for this cram cannon, and this is the basic element of a cram cannon. The next step is to tessellate this. Tessellation is the process of repeating a shape until it fills a space. So we will cancel our mirror mode. Because we are creating a sub-element next, we are not actually going to be tessellating this diamond. We are going to be tessellating this shape. So let us discard our work, set mirror mode on this turret, and begin. So we're going to set the middle of the shape into the middle of the turret. The reason that we're doing this is because we've now established a better symmetry than we were working with before. We simply line up the six white connectors on adjacent pieces and click. The reason that we did this is because even though the additional tessellate or the initial tessellation that we're going to do would have the symmetries that we want you would have one six-way connector in the middle that can't be shared between turrets or between barrels. So we've now created a cram slice. We are now going to trim it. I have decided to occupy the entire space of the turret with this cram slice. If you wish to put armor around it, which perhaps may be a good idea, you will need to leave one additional space. And by armor around it, I mean armor around the turret itself on the sub-object. I always put armor around the turret wells, but I don't always put armor on the turrets. This, to some extent, has to do with your own personal risk tolerance. Excellent. Let's check our work. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Or, in my case, often cut many times. Now we'll go back into the prefab tool, make something large enough to capture this entire slice, which should be 17 by 17. Since we're occupying the entire space, we will occupy the base level as well. And then we will continue to stack this segment until our boom is big enough. Now, if you're of the opinion that a boom can never be big enough, well, you are going to have to stop at some point or the game will stop you for you. Now we're gonna take six white connectors and link all of these up in equal measure. And remember, you can always make multiple turrets. So with a Tetris like this, it is very simple to either make one, two, or four barrels. I have done eight barrels before. It, I believe, does require specific turret shapes or turret sizes for it to work properly. Let us check. We still have a few more to connect. I believe that is everything. We will extend these upwards. And sort of like I'm making a actual turret, uh, but of course I am not because if I was making an actual turret, um, I would try to make the turret next smaller. All right, let's make sure that these all have the same stats. So far, so good. Now, next, I want to increase the gauge because I like big gauges. I believe that cram cannons are now more viable at different gauges than they used to be, but it used to be the case that they really had to be max gauge or bust. I do not believe that's the case anymore, but I still definitely prefer max gauge. Oh, 
Hopefully I'm doing this without going outside the turret ring. Excellent. Let's check our reload time again. It is now 7.68 seconds. I still find that to be fairly fast for a cram cannon. So we're gonna start adding payload compactors until I feel that the boom is big enough. I would advise to put payload compactors on the outside. Payload compactors are cheaper and it is acceptable for them to have less connectivity. Make sure to do this in a symmetrical manner between the different turrets because you do not want different reload times between them. We will check again. 14.18, 14.18, 14.18, 14.18. Excellent. This seems good enough for me. Now I'm going to attach some barrels, which for this example, I'm just going to slap on, slap on a number of barrels and call it good. At least um, in the barrel department, I'm not doing anything fancy. There are, you know, motor driven barrels, elevation barrels, that kind of stuff. There are other things you can do. Now we have not set local weapon controllers. So we're going to put local weapon controllers on the turret and the firing piece. In addition, since we put the bottom slab in, which had an obstruction in the way, we have a few additional pieces that are not connected to trim out. This also means that we have some stuff here that could be, could be payload, but payload compactors, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. Excellent. Everything should be connected. Now I'm going to go back into the cram components, pull out the fusing box. It only connects on one side. So make sure that that is the side that the side with the peg on it is the side that you're connecting and then choose the points that you want. So I'm going to choose inertial and time from launch. Copy that, stick on another one, copy my settings or paste my settings rather. Stick on another one, stick on another one, paste my settings. Since I've used time from launch and I want it to be variable, I'm also going to stick laser targeters on all of these. This will allow them to adjust their time based on the presence of an enemy. Make sure I'm in god mode because I'm in an, un an unprotected fortress. And then let's spawn in the superior combat vehicle. Excellent. We have now made a functioning cram cannon. 